<coughs> I first would like to give great thanks to God for helping us to be here, then to the programmers who led to the formation of LDG. Thanks so much. My thanks also goes to our able principal, Mrs. Elizabeth Kituko, for always facilitating us. And most of my gratitude goes to our coaches, Mr. Mwangi and Madam Lilian. I also would like to thank Dr. Dr. Judy Obuelo, a mentor and an author, a fan of the inspiring book, Philip Daughter. We do it to gain a lot of wisdom and, and has given us the courage to hold, to hold on, even under intense pressure, to compromise the value and principle which has been instilled in us. Not forgetting my friends who have me in their research, that is Lynn, Bina, Joki, Arunja, Dante, Veronica, and the rest. I thank my parents for always supporting me and telling me to be the voice of the voiceless. Thanks to my siblings at home for giving me a humble time to search. I greatly affirm to the return of Corporal Punishment in School and I stand for the value of discipline. I would like to clarify some things to Corporal Punishment. It's the physical punishment that is meted out to someone because of doing something wrong. It could be by pinching, slapping, or killing. Discipline. The practice of training people to obey rules and order and punishing them if they do not. It's from Advanced Learning Dictionary, 10th edition. The claim has already been supported in the Bible verse, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 13, where it says, Spare the rods for the child. Also, the value of discipline is greatly accorded in Bible verse, 20, Proverbs 29, verse 17. Discipline a child and you will always be proud of them. They will never give you a reason to be ashamed. Quotation 1. Corporal punishment is the appropriate discipline for certain students. Some students are likely to push their limit to an extent of causing problems to others. Their degree of discipline tends to be one. Lucian Williams, article, a founder of Child Care Teacher Circle, states that, states that some children are likely to push their limit to an extent of to an extent of causing problems to others. And the best way is to introduce corporal punishment to change their moral and discipline. This article justifies the use of corporal punishment to approach moral education without normalizing or slipping into moral advantages. Such philosophical teaching, teaching increases students' autonomy and self discipline and moral knowledge. Hence, it needs to be introduced as a pedagogy in institutions that educate. Partition 2. Corporal punishment has helped to make children obedient, <coughs> respectful, and polite, causing them to be disciplined. In absence of corporal punishment, children are likely to get well. This causes the dip in them or causing the degree of discipline to reduce. When the use of corporal punishment was banned in school in 2001, the result of it are dreadful. The result of it are high cases in banning of schools. When the CS of Education, Professor George Magoha, when heard this, he was shocked and his, re his result was that they should introduce corporal punishment at speech that he gave in 21st August 2021. On the 6th June, in Cubine Gas, when the planning to ban the school was put to action, it had resulted to death of two from one girls. That is Terry Wambari and Janet Waikera. They had succumbed to major bans resulting to their death. Reason for banning for the school was that they wanted a holiday. What is a holiday compared to the life of those innocent children? Had they banned corporal punishment together with the student's discipline? I wonder. Imagine if there was corporal punishment, the student would have feared and failed to ban the school. Janet and Terry would still be alive. Condition three, corporal punishment prevents children from persisting bad behavior and growing up to criminals. It helps to enhance the capacity of good moral resulting to discipline. Research by Kenley in, from South Africa in 2018 proves that lack of corporal punishment has led to the, has led to more juvenile criminals. This is the reason I strongly believe corporal punishment should be returned. Also, global research on criminal offense statistics state that 80% of the children in prison are due to lack of corporal punishment. Quotation form, corporal punishment is generally, generally known to keep time and is effective in getting students to comply immediately and be disciplined to make in, be disciplined. Grocery is an adolescent psychiatry and a principal. When you use corporal punishment, 90 of the students comply immediately. Who are we not to agree to this? Quotation five. Corporal punishment solves the problem there and there. <clears throat> Take an example of a student who is behaving in class. Instead of getting detention, the teacher could just paddle them and learning proceed. This is time for more study 
and other activity as compared to other forms of punishment, like suspension or detention, which takes up both the barrier and the staff time, as well as putting the student education on hold. Remember, when a student is suspended from school, they'll just be seated at home doing nothing, making them vulnerable to be lured into social care, like drug abuse, dirty, and even joining up in gangs that terrorize the society. Now, we don't want such young men and women. We want young men and women who will bring changes in our community. We want a generation of history makers and world shakers. And this can only be achieved by incorporating corporal punishment back into our schools so that teachers can mold students into these well focused and respectable young men and women. Other than saving time, corporal punishment is also easy and fast to administer. If given a, if given a chance between detention, suspension, or corporal punishment, most of the students often choose the latter. I mean, let's face it, no one, no one has to make up for the work they miss in class or go home for a week suspension and waste very valuable time. Conclusion. Since, since attention is one of the most patent rewards available and since it is difficult to punish without paying attention to the offender, punishment is a reward rather than a punishment. Punching the offender doesn't imply that engagement is only the productive way of showing care and love. That's why we did not define corporal punishment as a physical damage of the body, but as physical spark and speech and pinch or slap or slap in formidable parts. Corporal punishment cannot be compared to child abuse and violence. Child abuse and violence is an act of using forceful, forceful measures against one afflicted body. Do you advocate for violence? No, I don't have an advocate for violence. Then why do you advocate for an aspect of it or rather something that's related to it? Corporal punishment, as I told you, is not a violent, but it's a way of correcting people and making them to be disciplined. It's not a violent. Okay. Are you familiar with the phrase monkey see, monkey do? Okay. To those who are don't, including you, it says that children learn from observing their adults. Therefore, the use of physical violence uh, to solve issues wounds. Therefore, pardon, uh, it's the use of it says that children learn from observing their adults. Therefore, if they use physical violence to solve issues, will children learn from them and resort to violence in order to get what they want? But if you are punishing the child, with telling, if you are punishing the child and telling them that this is bad, why should they learn from that? That is, we are correcting the wrong thing that that person do. So it's the best way of correcting that person by punishing them. So I don't see how they will relate to that as well. How do you resolve, how do you address cases that when people die from it? For example, I have an article here stating that Kenny has been banned in school after a 16-year-old girl died after being given 15 strokes for laughing at a teacher. Let's Something that could have been addressed uh, using using logical and, and, and well-structured results. How do you address that? Let me tell you, when a student is touched during corporal punishment, don't blame it on the teacher. Ah, don't blame it on the corporal punishment, but blame it on the teacher. Why is that? Because if the teacher could have used a more moderate way for putting the do you have do you have do you have strategies in place that will actually guarantee that teachers will use corporal punishment relevantly? Do you have those strategies that will make sure that teachers don't step out of line? Yes, if the government put penalty on those who offend or use corporal punishment a harsh way, that will guarantee that it will be used in a safe way. How do you contain the dire consequences from your carrying? Because evidence shows that. Because it is evident that banning uh, that it was banned for a reason. Do you even know what, what, why corporal punishment was banned in the first place? Yes, it was banned then because it was used harshly. But now I'm articulating now, for it to be used in a war, in a moderate way that won't hurt the children. How can you guarantee that? I have told you that the, that the government can't put measures and penalties on those people who are Thank you. I'd like to catch you there. Can you respond to this? That five percent of children experience some form of corporal punishment at least once per year. Evidence shows that corporal punishment is, increases children's behavioral problems over time and has no positive outcomes. It has positive outcomes. Such as? 
they, as I said in my confession, that they will be obedient, respectful, and but polite. But all punishment is also linked to aggression, an issue that results to violence. But it's a form of promoting violence. What you're doing is advocating for violence. You're not advocating for discipline. I'm advocating for discipline. As I told you, discipline is obeying rules and And why should we resort to measures that, that are actually amicable to today's society, such as counseling, therapy, things that, things that we actually inflict physical marks on the child or even impair their, their, their upbringing? Counseling, you are wasting time. And if I tell you, if a student is making noise right now, would you go and start counseling when they when when they when they, when they, when they like to proceed? Uh, okay, you gave mention of counseling as wasting time. Here I have alternative to corporal punishment and the statistics for uh, success rate. Therapy, the statistics of 74%, counseling 68%, detention 69%, rehabilitation 59%. Can Where you respond to that? To Where have you gotten the statistics? statistics from because there is no proof that you have shown me where you have gotten this statistics before. You may be thinking <laughs> Are you suggesting that I'm fabricating my, my Yes, yes, That's because you are setting for that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to thank a few people and I'll make this brief. First my coaches, my teammates, my parents explicitly my mother, uh, the highway principal, and everyone who helps me soldier through this journey. Thank you. I'm ready. Through violence, you may murder the hater, but not the hate. In fact, violence merely increases hate. So it goes, returning, corporal, returning violence for violence multiplies violence, adding deeper darkness to a night void of stars. My value premise is justice. I value justice. Do you? The elimination of violence against children is called for in several targets of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, but explicitly in Target 16.2, end abuse, exploitation, trafficking, and all forms of torture of violence in children. However, the remnants of corporal punishment and its dire consequences are still evident in today's society. The result, generalized chaos. Studies found that 15 to 60% of mental problems, including depression, personality disorder, and intellectual disabilities, were linked to such punishments in school. My name is Swiga. In this debate, I negate the, mo the motion resolved. To do this, I shall present pre-reviewed facts, statistical data and analysis coupled with legal justification. My value, creation, my value creation is protection for children's rights. No child should be subjected to violence, however mild or abject. Therefore, the message is clear. Returning corporal punishment is not justifiable. By definition, it is, a, it is, a, it is causing deliberate physical pain in a child in a to control or manipulate their behavior. Contention 1. Physical long-lasting marks. A sensitive child, never physically punished, may not forget that one experience of corporal punishment, the effects which could impair the adult life forever. Therefore, we can't predict the consequences of violence and whether they will disappear in the long run. Additionally, the subconscious mind of children may hide their bad experiences which may affect their psychological upbringing. According to ABA, corporal punishment causes undesirable responses in children and students. This includes low self-esteem, low self-confidence, feeling that they are un unloved, unwanted, and impulsive. These feelings may be frustrating and may, and may make their lives mi uh, mis miserable. Contention 2. Behavioral change. Before evaluating the legal measures in 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 installed to eradicate corporal punishment, it is worth noting that the message sent to children is one of aggression. It includes repeatedly telling the child that they are worthless, useless, unloved, or unwanted, or threatening to use psychological or, or physical violence on them. This message of aggression, more than the actual physical punishment, has an important effect on the child's psychological and behavioral life. Such consequences include direct harm, sometimes resulting to severe damage, long-term disability, and death, which I pointed out. Number two, mental ill health, including behavioral anxiety, disorder, depression, hopelessness, low self-esteem, self-harm and suicidal attempts, alcohol and drug dependency, and emotional instability. Number three, increased aggression in children. Number four, impaired cognitive and social-emotional development, specifically emotional uh, regulation and conflicts resulting skills. Now, the legal justification. C, Article 19, Section 1. States uh, require state parties to take appropriate legislative, legislative administrative, social, and, and educational measures to protect the child from all forms of physical or mental violence 
injury or abuse, neglect or negligent, maltreatment, exploitation, including sexual, sexual abuse, when under the care of the parent, legal guardians, or other persons who care for the child. Teachers fall under this broad category. Number three, uh, number two, see Article 28, Section 2, states that state parties shall take all appropriate measures to ensure that school disciplines they are, is administered in a manner that is in a manner that is consistent with the child's human dignity and in conformity with the present conviction. Corporal punishment is found of temporary with the child's physical integrity. Having presented those brief but substantial points, it is apparent that corporal punishment is not justifiable. It is responsible for several cognitive and behavioral disorders coupled with unmentioned issues. A study conducted by the World Health Organization found that corporal punishment affects the same brain areas that are affected by severe physical, sexual, uh, by, by severe physical and sexual abuse. The magnitude was lower, but to see that, but to see that slapping, beating, or killing a child uh, affects their affects their brain development was a big surprise. Before concluding, it is worth mentioning that children learn from imitating the behaviors of adults. Therefore, the use of physical use of punishment by adults having authority over them is likely to train children to, to use physical violence to control behavior rather than rational persuasion, education, intelligence form of both positive and, and negative reinforcement. Thank you. I am open for cross-examination. There are many words violation of children's rights. Then, why focus on this that leads to this thing? Can you repeat your question? There are many words violation of children's rights. Then, why focus on this that leads to this thing? Corporal punishment doesn't instill this okay? It's nature's aggression, psychological disorders and misfits. But I've told you what this thing is. It's obeying rules and order and punishing them if they do not. There are so, better ways of instilling discipline, not through corporal punishment, not through inflicting physical and not through instilling physical harm on a child. Mention the ways that one can get discipline without using corporal punishment. Therapy, detention, counseling, and so many others more, with a success rate of over fifty percent. You said detention. Yeah. If a student, as I said in my article, if a student is detained. He or she will be seated at home. Do you think that is what is causing drug abuse and more social evils in the society, more than the corporal punishment that you are articulating for it to be abolished? When a child is detained in their house, they, take, they get time to reflect on their mistakes. This helps them build up on that and actually improve on it. So I highly doubt whether drug substance abuse is reflected to that because thank you actually for pointing that mental disability is directly linked to substance misuse. People who are mentally volatile are fond of intoxicating themselves in a bridge to escape reality. This fact was obtained from the UN while debating the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Corporal punishment through the physical harm that is inflicted on the child, they might result to substance abuse in a bridge to escape reality. But we know that when someone is seated at home, the, he or she is idle, so it should be the devil's of it should be the workshop of the devil. So you don't how do who you, told you who told you that Ibrahim who sits at home is idle? Where did you get that? They are idle because what are they doing at home? If you could have only given that child a slap or a cane, he or she would continue with the study. A child never happen. physically punished may not forget that one experience of corporal punishment. It will impair the adult's life. It will impair the psychological reasoning. It will impair everything. It is shattering the reality. But you have said that their child won't forget. So if he has done a wrong thing, he won't forget that. Thing. So he won't repeat the action again. Otto, what are the chances of children not repeating mistakes through corporal punishment? It raises aggression. Don't you think they do something worse in a bid to, to, to in a bid to, to justify their reason? Even detention, it results to No, detention it's... gives children time to reflect on their mistakes. Something that needs to be practiced more than anything. <clears throat> we cannot build a great nation through violence and anger. It's something that it's not logical. The only way we can do that is through is through logical reasoning. What if we bring law in the in the use of corporal punishment by penalizing those who use harsh harshly? Then should we ban it totally? What's the guarantee that those who, who what's the guarantee that teachers who use corporal punishment will be legally tried? 
What but, if the school decides, no, let's sit on this one? Let's but sit the on government, this one. But the government will, will be there. So it means the government will be there in schools where they are being punished. But it will, see, even right now, people are being punished because of their, of their wrongness. So, and the government is not there. Simply put, corporal punishment promotes violence. Thank you. I think we are moving on well. That was really, really super. The cross examination. I felt I was in court already. <laughs> my, my opponent asked me that corporal punishment is a violence. But I stated to you that corporal punishment is only a pinch and a slap. No, it's not distorting any part of the body. There, there is no bloodshed. Therefore, corporal punishment. Punishment cannot be termed as violence. If administered moderately, it doesn't hurt. It only sticks to the mind of a person. That's why he or she won't do the same mistake again. And if a student is injured during the corporal punishment, then the blame should not be put on the corporal punishment, but to the teacher who admin administered it wrongly. <coughs> You also stated that 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 other ways that can be used are like suspension and detention. And remember, I said in my article contention five that when students are suspended from school, they will just be seated at home doing nothing, making them vulnerable to be lured to social cuts like drug abuse. So it means. It means not, it's not the cocoa punishment that results to drug abuse. It's the suspension that you are giving to that person. That's why he or she is rebelling from you and rebelling from the teachers. Also, you say, how can cocoa punishment be used moderately? I said by government. As Lucian certain requests that Three swaps that the stick would be not about 20 inch long, not four inch wide. That is the appropriate discipline, discipline for the child. And I tell you, cocoa punishment saves time and is effective than detention. As I implied in as Grosso implied, he's a principal. And when he used it, 90% of the students complied immediately. How sure are you that through detention, the student will comply immediately as used by corporal punishment? Also in the act, you say that corporal punishment will result, will, will result to crime. But I stated to you in contention three, Research by Kenley from South Africa in 2018 proved that lack of corporal punishment leads to juvenile criminals. This is a reason that I strongly believe that corporal punishment should and must be returned in schools. Also, the Global Research of Criminals did this and 80% of the children in prison are due to lack of corporal punishment. And I telling you, you say also corporal punishment leads to sexual abuse. But I tell you, detention that's what leading to sexual abuse of the student because if he is seated at home, he or she will engage to the bad acts like what you are saying, sexual abuse. Okay. Uh, I first like to point out the mistakes that you made. Number one, uh, you say that detention or rather corporal punishment, sorry, you say that corporal punishment is used to save time. Therefore, that implies that you, you relish the outcomes and not the process. You would rather get what you want immediately rather than it, not, rather than invest in the process which is going to mold a, a good student. Also, you say that also 
It is worth noting that corporal punishment compels for respect. It's not earned through it. Which means that the respect obtained through corporal punishment is volatile. It can easily vanish like that. Thank you. Uh -huh. So I would like to move on to my negative version after pointing on those mistakes. Do you know why people like violence? It's because it feels good. Humans find violence deeply satisfying. Therefore, they raise the time used when engaging in this malicious act. Removing the satisfaction creates a hollow feeling, which often leads to frustration and confusion. I object violence because while it appears to do good, the good is only temporary. The evil is permanent. Allow me to justify my argument by referring to the events that took place in September 24, 2006, which I pointed out while we were cross while during the, the cross-examination. In spite of being banned, a 16-year-old girl was scammed to death simply because she laughed at a teacher. My question would be, how do you think the parents, relatives, and friends of that unfortunate victim reacted to that news? Put yourself in their shoes. Because from where I stand, corporal punishment is the last refuge for the incompetent. So therefore, if I was to redefine the term, I'd say that, that corporal punishment is a carefully laid financial, psychological, and physical chart. It yields no fruits. It darkens a night devoid of stars. Great anger and violence will never fade the nation. Throughout my debate, I emphasize on its psychological effects. Mental violence is, is as bad as mental violence is as bad as physical, as physical violence. Only once since you're consumed by your own thoughts. Imagine being a prisoner of your own mind, going down a spiral of undesirable thoughts of unfortunate events. This will most certainly blow your productivity and general outcome. Spare the road, spoil the child. Some researchers think that religious references endorse the use of a cane. Therefore, if this is the case, if they are using the cane simply because of a religious text, they need to reinterpret or exclude their religious beliefs from teaching. They say that actions are louder than words, but in this context, words are stronger than, than actions. People successfully solve disputes by consulting and discussing the issue, not fighting through it. Fighting through it only results to a greater damage. Generalized chaos, which was part of my introduction. <clears throat> Violence is no choice. It's a deadly weapon. Corporal punishment sends out the message that it is socially acceptable. Let us take into account that it doesn't actually work. There is no evidence, absolutely none, that, that shows that schools using corporal punishment are more disciplined than those that don't. There's none. Also, it's worth noting that, the, that my competitor gave absolutely no statistics no statistics of whether corporal punishment works. If anything, the lasting effects of physical correction are more negative than the positive and undermine the teacher-pupil relationship. Physical discipline, physical discipline fixes a behavior problem for a short time, but, uh, but can cause a stated aggression. Building a relationship and good discipline, policy takes time and energy, but it is worth it. So, if I was to take the devil's advocate and embark on, the, on a future journey with the affirmers who support the resolve on the resolve, one question remains unanswered. What measures are put in place to ensure that teachers won't misuse their authority? Long story short, none. There's no, there's no uh, measure that, that has been put in place that has actually been implemented, which ensures that teachers will not step out of line. None. Thank you. Statistics that state that corporal punishment work, but I've stated to you that Rosho is an adolescent psychiatry and a principal when you use it, 90% of them comply. I am still affirming to the return of corporal punishment and still my value is this thing. Imagine a world with no corporal punishment, it is a world that is coming to an end. If we only ban corporal punishment for 20 years and the result of it are terror in our minds, what if we ban it for life? Articles of Lucian Williams, Statistics of South Africa in Criminal Offense and the True Use of Faith by Brosho shows that, shows, states that it truly works. Imagine the excruciating pain that is running within the hearts of those parents who lost their children in the burning of school due to what? Lack of discipline. Or how many students have been lost due to bullying because of disrespect and indiscipline? Let's not only focus Let's not only focus on the student. What about the teachers? The question goes out to you. How many teachers have we lost because of being beaten by the students or the stress 
the stress they get from harsh treatment from the students. This is because this link is lacking and we must bring it through thick and thin. Is the life of Terry and, ja and Janet not enough for you? So how many lives should we lose for you to see that corporal punishment is, is needed? Don't say that corporal punishment is a violence because of the traditional use of it. Because now I'm articulating for it to be used in the correct and moderate measures. So I don't see the essence of us banning it. There are many people who are subjected to corporal punishment and have become example in our have become example leaders in the society. Example is the is the founder of Family Bank, Dr. Titus Kiondo. And okay, let me give a role model that you all know. That is the late Professor Wangari Mazai. She studied in a school that was led by military and they were subjected to harsh corporal punishment. And look at who they have become role models. If harsh corporal punishment could mold such people, what if we used it moderately? It would mold legends. If our creator says improper, but the rod is for the back of him who lacks sense, so where's the wrongness of using corporal punishment? That's why I'm greatly, I'm greatly articulating for the return of corporal punishment to bring the value of this kill. Thank you. That was a fire session. <laughs> <laughs> we've, quite, we've had quite formidable speakers coming on. So for the last round, in the next five minutes, we will have the affirmative speaker from Highway against the negative speaker from State House Girls. Thank you, Miki, for your participation. You can wait in the red ball.